for the preliminary, we're using four venues, three venues for the exhibition and one for the public programs. The public programs are uh, taking place in an installation that was opened in January, so several months in advance of the actual exhibition, called the Crash Pad by uh, the Greek-Norwegian architect Andreas Angelidakis. It's a concept room, but it's conceived as a space for different kinds of activities, screenings, discussions, and so on. The other three venues are uh, all spaces already dedicated to art and culture. The Cave, traditionally used for the Berlinale here on Augustrasse, and also the Kunstmuseum in Dahlem, particularly the Ethnographic Museum in Dahlem, and uh, the Haus am Walsee, which is a landmark of 1970s, 1980s West Berlin uh, art scene. Um, we, for, or for this Biennale, what I did was uh, divide the, separate the curatorial process from the exhibition itself. So the curatorial process engaged with the city and uh, has, with this cartography using these venues, uh, uh, has uh, been uh, a or aimed at making a statement about Berlin now, today. How uh, it's constructed, how it's perceived, and what parts of it are not. Uh, entering into the picture, particularly Dahlendorf and Zellendorf and so on, but many others. So these are only examples of, of, of what is not factored into the, to the idea of what Berlin is today. And uh, the exhibition uh, itself has a number of different narratives, uh, depending on the venue you are in and depending on what uh, spaces you are in. There are different things that come into view and others recede. So if we look at the room that we are in, where there is a, a, a series of drawings by the Argentinian artist Irene Koppelman. Uh, there are almost 300 drawings that she's been making over the years. Very delicate and very dedicated. Um, they, 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 they display a big part of what her practice is about. She also does sculpture, but we didn't include that. But in this case, it was important to put drawing in this main room this room, the, the one in the center and over there, there is drawings, uh, to indicate that there is both a um, propositional aspect to contemporary art and, uh, and that even things that have a, the appearance of being delicate and formal have a political content. So, mm, Do you perceive uh, some shift uh, between two months ago before the opening and now, because we are going to end, between appear many critics, many many articles to this exhibition show. May you tell me your opinion to this? You mean if my perception of the exhibition has shifted throughout these two months? Yeah, I mean, uh, not, not in a way that is related to the criti critique that's been published. I have not... Uh, found it that exciting, but um, of course being in the Biennale and going through the Biennale all the time and seeing the works installed next to each other, there are certain aspects of the exhibition that become more clear. Uh, there are a lot of intuitive decisions made when you make an exhibition of this scale and how those intuitive decisions transform, are transformed into more clear statements is uh, very exciting to see. Yes. You found some, some argument, for example, why you did it so in this way? It's more like um, the things were there, but you still have to see where, how they fit with each other. So, you know, next to this room, there are these um, photographs of graveyards in South Africa. And next to that one, there is a video about um, uh, the silver mines in the highlands in Peru. And there is no obvious relationship between those works, but there's an intuitive connection that I saw. And I think it works now that I see them installed. As you go through from one to the other, you start, uh, if you, when you're paying attention, you start noticing there is, uh, that land is a big issue in this exhibition, but it's not the only theme. So I have chosen to not f foreground any particular theme to allow others to exist. So in this case, you can see that the issue of land, what land means today, how it's used, occupied, 
uh, and so on is uh, and especially now with the last few weeks of what's going on in Gaza for instance these things become much more uh, into bring, are brought into focus in a much more urgent way than perhaps I could have anticipated uh, you know before the Biennale opened. A little bit uh, back, uh, more clearly, more in detail, the starting point. Tell me more to this, to this process of these two years, who uh, collaborated with you and uh, how you fit this topic. Well, it's hard to narrow it down to one starting point, but um, let's say that one of them is Berlin as a city and this, particularly the reconstruction of the city center as a historical town. So the idea that Berlin has to continue to exude history is one of the starting points, why we chose the 19th century and why we have to negotiate the late Prussian Empire to access the Berlin of today is one of the big questions that was asked at the beginning of the process. The other one, more general and related to the artist practice themselves and the plurality of places they come from is how we relate to history effectively. Uh, so, the, you know, on the one hand, you ha we are subjects of history, on the other hand, we're individuals. And the individual is always, the position of the individual is the position from which you can resist being a subject of history. And I think most of the works that are in the Biennale have to do with this uh, friction between the individual and the subject. And it's particularly a subject of history. Um, what I have in mind is that we have a, in the scientific tradition, we have a very strict way of dealing with history. I'm an art historian and a historiographer on top of that. So I, what I studied was how history is written in different historical moments. You know, what, how does a, one write history in the 19th century vis-a-vis -vis how one writes history in the mid 20th century, late 20th century, and so on. Um, a lot of this is the concealing, has uh, involves the concealment or the or the pushing back of affect for the sake of science and veracity and so on. And what I uh, what I think is that there is this moment in which you are or not a subject of a certain history. You can we can understand each other's history no problem, but which one is the one? that affects you directly, which one is the one you grew up in, you know, where, where you have an emotional relationship to these historical events, Elan, and so on. You know. So, of course, uh, Latin America may be comprehensible for a European, but doesn't mean that you grew up, uh, growing up in Latin America puts you in a different affective relationship to that idea, Latin America, same Germany, and so on, right? I, so the question is more how this affect this uh, in, uh, relates to the attempt at understanding history. And this affect, in a sense, is a very um, unstable, unclear uh, relationship. But unlocking it or placing it might be a good uh, way to understanding that um, different narratives of history are at odds, mostly because they are told from a passionate point of view and not necessarily from a, an objective point of view, and it's inevitable. So this is the, the this is not that uh, the affective one is more important than the you know objective is, is that they are completely entrenched and impossible to distinguish. The problem is, for me, that uh, the city is the, also the founder of this, uh, this uh, event, this show, and also the city probably looking for arguments to rebuild the city centre, because, it, as you know, the Berlin needs to develop a new structure. Or, so, <clears throat> do, you, do you think it's also the, the game of the city that we have a public money? And we also looking for argument how to it's possible to work because you <clears throat> you install it you, for example in Dalam you install it the new work 
next the old work. So this is also the system how to rebuild the city center, for example, in the future. So uh, tell me your personal opinion to this, or you 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 thought about it? It's it's a, it's a little bit related because it's quite clear. So or it's not. The question of the city center is important because the um, has been in the at the height of the framing of the Biennale from the beginning. Not only Berlin, but many other cities in the world have resorted to similar tactics, to the museumification of the city center and the drawing of tourists into that uh, part of town where also there are embassies and parliament houses and so on. So that your citizen, the citizen, uh, citizenry, the active citizens of the city tend to live outside of the city center and they are replaced by tourists who have no political or otherwise investment in the city. No? But at the same time, as you get closer and closer to the center, you have less and less civil rights. This is more or less a tendency in, in many big cities around the world, especially capitals. Berlin is no exception. In terms of what you discuss about uh, Dalem, it's um, it's uh, the 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 history has happened. There's no denying it. But the tendency here has been to erase everything that is too difficult to negotiate, effectively, especially, and replace it by this. Um, uh, quite absurd version of the triumph of the intellect during the late Prussian Empire and so on. But that's not the only thing that existed. Not only Humboldt lived in the late Prussian period, there were other darker sides of that. And, uh, and denying that they existed and that they actually led to much of what happened during the 20th century is very problematic. But this is more or less what's going on in the city center here. Um, and I agree with you, if that's what you were saying, that uh, rather than um, reconstructing everything cosmetically, uh, it's uh, much more relevant to place things alongside and allow the things that have existed to continue to exist as uh, ready-made uh, statements, historical statements. And this is exactly what I have done in Dalian, to treat the museum as a ready-made. Um, and not see it as an obsolete museum because the idea of obsolescence is quite problematic in itself, but rather as a testament to the different ways in which we have related to, in the, in the case of the ethnographic museum, ethnographic uh, objects and other cultures uh, throughout the 20th century, or Asian art or whatever else is in the museum. So this is exactly what... Uh, yeah.